Hello everyone, so uh, today I'm going to show you guys how to set up a Project Soundboid server for Linux. Now, uh, I'm going to use this excellent guide um, from Conel and uh, NASCO. Uh, they have this excellent guide on the uh, Steam community page for Project Soundboid on how to set up a server. <coughs> I'm going to be using this excellent guide as sort of a reference. It, uh, it explains how to set up a server for Windows and Linux clients. <coughs> as well as how to obtain the files through CMD and through Steam itself um, and also how to create a non-Steam server. So there's one big uh, question you're going to have to ask yourself w before you set up a Project Soundboid server and that is do you want to set up a Steam server or do you want to set up just a standard server? Now the difference is, is if you own the Steam version of Project Soundboid you can host a uh, version of a Project Zomboid server which has Steam VAC uh, in, with it so that way uh, for instance say somebody's VAC banned they won't be able to connect to your server um, which is a nice little layer of security I guess you could say it sort of keeps a uh, nice layer of authenticity it sort of keeps people who have been banned and sort of keeps hackers and stuff out of your server um, but the problem with hosting a Steam server is people who own the non-Steam version of the game like say for instance someone owns a version from GOG or some DRM free copy um, they will not be able to connect to your server now um, I personally would recommend hosting a Steam version of the server just because you do get that VAC, that Steam VAC uh, authentication associated with your server which is nice um, but at the same time though even if you own the Steam version of the game you can host both a VAC server and a non VAC server so that's pretty cool but uh, anyway yeah so in order to host a server you'll need to actually own Project Zomboid on Steam of course and um, the first thing the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to set up both versions of the server but I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the uh, non Steam server because uh, it is sort of quicker so to host the non Steam version of a Project Zomboid server you just need to first download Project Zomboid onto your Linux machine through Steam and when that's downloaded uh, it'll actually put it in um, this directory that I'm uh, going to right now it puts it in um, it puts the game files in local share Steam Steam apps common projects on void um, so yeah just navigate to that directory in your uh, any of your own file browsers and you'll have uh, inside you'll have the shell script which actually starts Project Zomboid server settings which um, of course you have a source file which is empty for some reason that's not really anything and then you have the actual Project Zomboid directory so you're gonna wanna go into the Project Zomboid directory inside the Project Zomboid game folder that's really confusing that there's two of them but this is the file that contains a uh, this is the folder that contains a file called start server dot shell and this is the actual uh, shell script that sort of uh, does everything for you and starts the server. <clears throat> now, before launching, um, if you plan on doing a non uh, Steam version of the server, um, you're going to want to change. You see here you have doo -doo 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 -doo, these uh, variables right here. If you've ever hosted a Minecraft server, then you pretty much know what these are. These are essentially uh, how much RAM you want the ser dedicated to the server. So if you have a lot of RAM, I recommend really turning this number up. Um, it depends on how many people you're going to have on your server, how much RAM you have on your server. Uh, it's important to give your RAM enough server to where it can sustain all the people you're going to have in it without crashing your system. Um, but yeah, anyway, just go ahead and change that value prior to starting the server if you plan on hosting a uh, non-Steam server. So anyway, yeah, once you've uh, done that, just go ahead and type in uh, dot slash. You're going to want to do this from the terminal. You're going to want to open up this uh, directory inside the terminal and do dot slash uh, start server. And what this will do is uh, if you don't, if this directory doesn't already exist in your home directory, the Zomboy directory, it'll go ahead and create it for you. And the first time launching, it's going to ask you for an administrator password. You can put this to whatever. Um, I'm just going to put it that for now. And what that does is that creates an administrative account admin. And then it go ahead, and then it starts the server. It generates the world and everything. If this is going to be your first time launching a server, it is going to take a little bit, just because it has to, you know, um, generate everything and uh, save the config file. 
Uh, so yeah, and then it, this is the main reason why we started it, so that it would generate the configuration file. So once it's done, generate the configuration file and you have server started and all that, go ahead and quit out the server. Now, uh, the reason why I recommend starting, um, even if you're going to do a Steam version of the server, I would recommend starting the non-Steam server first so that it actually generates the configuration files, the server test.ini. Because for some reason, the Steam version of the server, it will not generate these configuration files and you sort of have to manually look it up and it's kind of a pain. Um, but anyway, yeah, now once we have these configuration files, um, you know, generated, we're going to go ahead and go back into our home directory, which is your user's home directory, you know, slash home Keith for me because Keith is my username. And then you just want to CD into the newly created uh, Zomboy directory. Um, and then you're going to want to go under server. And then you have uh, a Lua file, which isn't really important. You have a server test.ini. And this is your actual configuration files where you set all of your options. So, you know, you're going to want to have to, you know, you're going to want to set it to public if it's a public server. And, you know, you just have a, a you know, uh, all kinds of different options here. If it's open, global chat, you have a bunch of stuff here. You can, there is a, there is a wiki page uh, which explains some of these options. Um, I have it, the Project Zomboid wiki right here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a link to this wiki uh, in the description. And you can find all kinds of useful information here. In fact, I think it may have... Uh, did you do? Yep, there you go. You actually have a guy dedicated to running a Linux server on here as well. Uh, I don't think there are any server settings. Let me try finding. Yeah, well, I don't think there are any. There's anything in the wiki about server settings, but the configuration configuration file itself is pretty uh, straightforward. You have a uh, you know like a password for the server, amount, max accounts per use, sleep allowed, sleep needed. Uh, workshop items, uh, scoreboard, you have all kinds of uh, settings in here. Just set these to whatever you would uh, prefer your server have. Um, <clears throat> and once you're done with that, you can, uh, once you're done with that, you just want to have to port for, you want to have people actually connect, be able to connect to your server. So in order to do that, you need to actually port forward. Now, uh, I, I explained how to port forward in my Xander on a video. Really, it's not a process I feel like I have to cover, but I am just going to glance over it real quick and just sort of give you guys an idea of what you have to do. So you have to go into your uh, your computer's firewall, which in my case, um, I am using UFW Uncomplicated Firewall. Uh, it is the default for Ubuntu and Ubuntu-based derivative Linux distributions. And for me, um, I have to allow, uh, let me find, for me, I have to allow uh, ports 16261 with the UDP protocol. You want to open up that port because that's the handshake port. That's the sort of like verification port that, you know, uh, whenever a client connects, it sort of uses that port to handshake them. Um, and then you got to do, you, you got to open ports 16262 through however many players you're going to have on the server. So for instance, if you're having a 10 person server, which is what I have, you would open 16262 all the way through 16272 um, and the protocol for that is TCP. Now uh, also if you want to uh, host a Steam back server you're going to want to open up uh, port 86 or 8766 for uh, both protocols so that the uh, Steam back can connect to that. Um, I could be wrong on the protocol it uses. I have both protocols open just to be safe but to be honest I think it only uses one I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, basically that's what the ports you're going to want to forward on your firewall and your modem as well so that people can actually connect to your server. Um, the way you would do it, port forward on your computer, on my end, I use UFW, so you know if I do sudo UFW status, I get a list of you know like ports and stuff that are allowed on my computer. Uh, to add a port, I would do uh, sudo UFW allow and then I just type in the port that I want to open for instance 16261 slash uh, UDP and then you know I would do that allow for every single port number that I want to allow and I just do that until you know and then when I'm done I do status to make sure that all the ports are on there and then I just uh, UFW reload which will reload the firewall and then there you go 
and then the next step from allowing it on your through your computer firewall is to actually go to your modems configuration page and uh, port forward all the ports that are necessary from there um, yeah if you've ever port forwarded for like Minecraft for instance it's the same it's the same thing applies there the same logic uh, it's just different port numbers really but yeah once you uh, are finished port forwarding everything you can go ahead and start up the server and then your friend you give your friends your IP address and the server uh, IP and they should be able to connect um, so there you go now you're now running a non project zomboid server or non excuse me a non steam version of the project zomboid server now to run a steam version uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up steam uh, you can also do this install this software from steam cmd there's actually a if you go to the um, that guide I link to you can actually find a um, it explains how to install the server files from Steam CMD. Um, so yeah, if you want to, if you have a completely headless ser Linux server and you don't want to install Steam or any desktop environment, this explains how to install them from here. If you've ever installed an application from Steam CMD before, you know all you need is the ID and you need to force install there to tell it where to install. It's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, once you have, uh, but you can also do it from Steam itself. The easiest way to do it is from Steam itself. Uh, you know, you can go to library and then go to tools, and then it's right here. Steam projects on boy dedicated server. Um, but yeah, uh, you just download that, and once it's downloaded, it'll save uh, the files to dot local. It's very similar to uh, where Project Zomboid is stored, but it's in um, it's in local share Steam Steam apps common Project Zomboid dedicated server. That's where the uh, this installs into. If you install it from Steam, and you also have a start, if you remember the start server script, it's in here as well. And once again, uh, it's a, the file layout's a little different, but it's basically the same file. Uh, if you remember, you have the XMS option here. This again, I definitely recommend uh, you know setting this value to whatever how much uh, RAM you want to dedicate to the server. Um, and once you get done with that, you just run dot slash start server, and it, as long as you port forwarded all the ports, all oh, my public IPs on there, that's nice. Are gonna have to censor that? But yeah, once you um, <clears throat> if you port forwarded the ports properly, um, again, if you're using, if you want to do the Steam version of the server, you have to also port forward uh, the ports I mentioned earlier, which is let me. I believe it is. Let me bring those up again. Yeah. See these are uh, these ports. Then these ports right here are. Do, 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 do. These ports are for uh, the actual game and the clients. The this ports are for the Steam uh, service itself. So yeah, you're gonna wanna make sure if you're running a Steam version of the server to port forward eight six or eight seven six six. So yeah, and um, if as long as you've done everything correctly, uh, people should be able to launch Project Zomboid. One, one thing I'd like to make note of, and why I would recommend buying Project Zomboid from Steam, is because uh, the the Steam version of Project Zomboid can only connect to Steam clients. However, if you right click on the uh, Project Zomboid in the uh, in your Steam library, go to Properties, and set the launch options to dash no Steam, you can actually launch a version of Project Zomboid that doesn't have all the Steam uh, crap loaded with it so that way you can connect to non-Steam uh, servers however it will not allow you to connect to Steam authenticated servers um, but yeah anyway as long as you're as long as you've set everything up you know if you're running a Steam server people who run the Steam game normally should be able to join you so I'm gonna do now we'll go ahead and launch Project Zomboid and connect into our server See, as long as you've port forwarded uh, all the route, all the uh, ports on both your computer's firewall and on the router, people should be able to connect from anywhere with no issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to join. Nope, no tutorial. And we're gonna do. Hopefully, I won't have to uh, type in my IP to connect. Hopefully, I can just connect locally with this. There we go. Yep, we're connecting. 
then there you go. And then when you first start the server, or first log into the server, you know, it's going to ask you a name, gender, and it's going to ask you for your character and all that. And yeah, there you go. People should be able to connect to the server. Uh, no issues at all. Yeah, the wiki itself, um, the wiki uh, is pretty expansive, at least for the most part. Uh, like I find it, it's a little bit not, uh, you know, tough to navigate like any other wiki, uh, game wiki in my experience. But you can find things like, uh, there's, I know somewhere here it explains how to um, set up a, uh, the server configurations. I'm probably going to find that and put a link to it in the uh, description where, you know, it does explain somewhere how to adjust server settings and stuff like that. I'm going to have to find it and uh, let you guys know. Put that maybe possibly put that in the description so you guys can actually uh, find it oh, like right here here you go here they are yeah see there is an option here under the multiplayer section that tells you all the what all the commands do in the dot uh, ini file I showed you earlier and then you have administrative commands um, you know which of course is you know all the commands you can do uh, you can grant admin to people remove admin ban users now the thing is from from the very uh, start if you want to like um, add a user to admin you'll have to do it from the actual console of the uh, product example like for instance uh, the the default if you join in you won't be getting admin but if I do grant admin and I do gs57 well first I okay well first I have to add user GS57 that will whitelist him. Okay, I have to do a slash. Wow. So, yeah, first thing, if you want to grant admin to a person on a server, you have to do uh, slash add user, the person's name, uh, and then do the password for that person. So, I'm going to do, you know, just password one. Oh, see, <clears throat> you don't do a slash in the console. And you know, password one, and then after you whitelist them, you then do uh, grant admin gs57, and then now, whenever a per that person connects to your server, they'll have admin, they will have to connect with a password if I'm not mistaken. So, if we launch this now. now, I'm just showing you guys how to set your uh, product Zomboid character as an admin. So that way you can actually do command uh, admin com console commands uh, from the game itself, and you don't have to you know switch to the console window. Yeah, see right here we have GS57, and then we have to enter the password we specified when we whitelisted him. And when we connect, you should see that my character is now admin. Loading up. And there you go. See, I now have admin. And of course, if you do believe it's slash help, yep, you get a list of commands that you can do as an administrator. See, so anyway, this has been uh, Keith, aka Ghost Squad 57, showing you guys how to set up a Project Zomboid server on Linux. Uh, there's going to be links in the description for all the stuff I used for this video. Like, I'm going to, you know, include uh, the multiplayer, the server settings. Uh, link to that so you guys can go ahead and read that. I'm going to include a link to this uh, tutorial as well, which is I believe by the developers of the game, at least one of them, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and you know, you, that way you guys can get an idea of how to set it up and you know, if you're a Windows user or something, you can read that and get put in the right direction. Um, so anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, make sure to share it. Um, thanks for watching, signing out.